Let me start off by giving you an introduction to the Engineering Council. The Engineering Council is a regulatory body for the engineering profession. Our board is drawn from representatives of the professional engineering institutions, uh, as well as independents from both engineering and the wider professional world. As a collaborative institution, the Engineering Council develops standards for formation and training as well as competence to practice and commitment to professional conduct, which includes acting in an ethical and sustainable manner. We define requirements for continuing professional development, which is why membership of one of our licensed professional uh, member institutions is core to registration as a professional engineer. Making use of our broad base of institutions and professional registrants, we also quality assure the implementation of our standards by our member institutions. A key aim of our work is to provide society with confidence in the engineering profession. And these activities are all summarized on, on the next slide. So while professional registration is not a legal requirement to work on engineering projects in the UK, the register provides employers, government and society with confidence in the knowledge, experience and societal commitment of professionally registered engineers and technicians. We are therefore striving to encourage customers and suppliers of engineering services to demand this evidence of competence commitment in their own project teams, as well as in their leadership structures and indeed their supply chains. The Engineering Council works with the global engineering community to harmonise and promote standards and our own standards are therefore internationally recognised and address global challenges as we'll hear today. The Engineering Council also publishes guidance in areas of emerging practice or strategic importance such as sustainability but also ethical conduct and cyber security to name a few. We collaborate broadly to keep our standards and guidance relevant for example, our Engineering Ethics Reference Group, a joint initiative with the Royal Academy of Engineering. So let's move on to tell you a little bit more about today. So the Engineering Council standards and our guidance on sustainability have recently been reviewed and updated with feedback from across the profession. The aim of this event is both to show the big picture of how internationally recognised standards and guidance develop engineering competence for a sustainable world and to drill down into how that supports individual engineers in their day-to-day -day work. Importantly, all our documents are available free on our website for any engineer, technician or employer to use. For those who are interested in seeking professional recognition, the first step is to join one of our licensed professional engineering institutions. They will provide advice and support on how to become professionally registered and they will also contextualize our guidance uh, and provide support for continuing professional development for their sector or discipline. And we'll be hearing an example of this later from SIBSI, the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineers. Dr. Larissa Suzuki will explain how our standards support individual engineers in practice and Terry Fuller uh, the Engineering Council board member who chaired the working group which revised our guidance on sustainability will talk a little bit about that, those developments. But right now I take great pleasure in handing over to Professor John Chudley, also a fellow board member of the Engineering Council and chairman of our Registration Standards Committee, who will introduce our opening speaker, Nikhil Seth, the United Nations Assistant Secretary General. 